Welcome everybody to Week in Review and thank you for allowing me to be able to inspire and equip you and inform you at this very critical time in our nation's history. Today, this video commentary and what is going to follow for the next weeks is going to focus in because on what? We face midterm elections and it's turnaround time. I say that with enthusiasm. It's turnaround time and we're going to examine the new 21 point contract with America to clean house and capture Congress. You say that sounds like quite a, a presentation. Well, stay with me because this is very important. But I want you to start with me by saying you're going to believe with me. We can see God do a great work. Yesterday, I went to Vanderbilt Hospital and a man of God who's a premier worship leader. He was the leader in the Brownsville Revival where hundreds of thousands came to Christ. Millions came from all over the world. And he's a dear friend. But you know what? A week ago, he had an aortic um, uh, rupture. And uh, it, it was a shock. He said, you know, using good health, ate right, etc. He is in his 50s. But when I walked in the room to see him and encourage him, you know what the first thing he said to me when he looked at me? He said, I should have been dead. But you know what? We talked and he said, God intervened. Now, I want you to know there's people, and I'm one of them, that says with what America has done as we've turned our back on God and as we promoted pornography and the whole LGBTQ agenda, and we've removed God from our schools in terms of prayer and Bible reading, Ten Commandments, and abandoned God. You know what? America, in a sense, should be dead in terms of our way of life as we've known it and the blessing of God. But we serve a good God, and God wants to intervene as we respond. Now, there's three things we need to do politicians, they've got to get on track, not just talk. What they need to do is they need to take action. And that's what we're going to talk about in this contract with America. But you know what? We need to do three things. These are the essentials. We need to have committed prayer. We need to have confessed sin. And we need to have civic engagement. We need to know and be informed and we need to vote and we can't sit back. We can't say, well, God's sovereign, you know, God handles all this. You know what? We need to take action. We're called to be salt, to hold back decay and light in the midst of the darkness. Now you look around today and you know what? I don't know if you've ever seen this with children. If somebody breaks a vase or something and you come in the room and there's two or three children and they look at each other, nobody wants to assume responsibility. They don't want to admit what's gone on. Well, the same thing with America. This present administration administration. They try to propagandize us. They try to distract us. They try to shift blame to Putin, COVID, past administration. But I want you to stop for a minute. What's happened? Think of this. The breakage in less than two years. Can you imagine? Uh, think of this. We had non-existent inflation. We had um, uh, low unemployment. We had minimal gas uh, prices. We had um, uh, rising wages, w uh, and especially, think of it, for uh, minorities. And then we had mortgage rates that were, you know, very acceptable and reasonable. We had respect of the adversaries in the other countries of the world. We had energy independence for the first time in over 70 years. We had a strong rebuilt military. And now we have severe recession. We have a tottering stock market. We have a very serious situation. You know, when I was in the 19, uh, uh, well, let's just say when I first got married, um, it was the Carter years. And you know what happened? Today we have inflation that the previous administration, it was about 1.3%. Now it's approaching 9%. Do you feel it when you go to a restaurant or you're making purchases or paying your bills? This didn't happen by accident. This is the result of poor leadership and policies that have brought us to this place. And you know what? You got to think about these kind of things because they're serious. During the Carter years, when he was the first president, really, that I was, you know, supporting. But you know what? What he did was he brought about, think about inflation that went to, you know what it was? 18%. And mortgage rates went to 14%. Are you ready for that? Do you know that today, if you, a uh, median price for buying a home in America, about 400 some thousand dollars. Do you know a year ago what you would have paid? Well, previous administration, you would have paid about $1,600 for your monthly mortgage. Now it's up to 2,400 and it's going to continuing to escalate. So that means you will be paying 
$300,000 more for a 30-year mortgage. That is shocking. You know, Kamala Harris came out recently as vice president and they asked her about the border. And she said, and I quote, she said, the border is secure. That is not true. The border is a disaster. It's chaos. 3.4 million illegals have come across the border and they're walking right through. And with it, we have 100,000 that have died from the fentanyl, sex trafficking. Uh, we have terrorists that have come across, smugglers. I mean, the cartels are ruling it. And you say, Larry, what's going on there? Well, it's the result of poor leadership. So you know what? It's time for a turnaround. And with the midterm elections, it's an opportunity to clean house and what else? Well, we have the opportunity to capture Congress. It can be done. Now, there is a proven plan that took place in 1994, and I believe it's time to dust it off and put in the new agenda items. You say, what are you talking about? Well, in 1994, the Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, who I deeply respect, I was just at Opera Land where he got the Winston Churchill Award for his courage, and what he did was he studied Ronald Reagan's 1985 uh, uh, State of the Union Address, pulled out points, studied what the Heritage Foundation offered, and then he put together a new contract with America. And there were points there in terms of welfare reform and having open committee meetings and uh, tax reduction. I mean, it was an amazing thing, but he got specific and he said the same thing with traditional conservatives. We got to get out of ambiguity. And that's what we must do. You know, if you think about it, House leader is Mitch McConnell. His nickname is the turtle. And he, in a sense, he wants to wait out the clock. We can't do that. We got to get specific. Well, when Newt put things together in, a, in the contract with America, let me give you the specifics. Here was the legislative masterpiece. And what happened was Republican candidates, all 300 of them across America, all signed on in unison. We saw the Republicans gained 54 House seats. We saw the Republicans gained eight Senate seats. We saw that the Republicans gained 12 governorships. And what happened was the Republicans gained control of Congress for the first time in 40 years. It was a revolution that took place. And you know what? It's time for the same kind of radical plan because we cannot stay in ambiguity anymore. You know, the Democrats did not like what Newt Gingrich did. And they don't like now what they're starting to hear, the rumblings that something similar is going to take place. So I want to challenge you. Stay with me for the week in review. We're going to get very specific and I'm going to outline for you because I've drawn from what happened in the past and then what I believe is current and relevant for us today. The Bible says when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people groan. It's time for us to honor God and let's do it in a way that'll be specific. Stay with me.